As we flew in with the Daphne Islands in plain sight, we knew that we were approaching a very special place. Over spring break, 14 Celtic students and two professors embarked on a voyage to the Galapagos. Here, the birds and animals do not keep their cautious distance from us. The finches hop around our feet. Tortoises slowly walk about their way, almost grunting at us for being in their path. Endless fields of marine iguanas pay us no attention while they perch on the volcanic rocks. Sea lions follow us, asking to play. Penguins and pelicans hunt underwater as we snorkel. Before going on this life-changing trip, we spent a term studying the theory of evolution. A course on evolution would not be complete without examining the works of Peter and Rosemary Grant, the legendary scientists who collected quantitative proof of evolution happening before their eyes, something Darwin was never able to do. By meticulously measuring beak sizes of finches on the island of Daphne Major, the Grants have shown that tiny variations, and I mean sub-millimeter differences in beak length, determined which finch got to live and which died. During the term, we studied evolution as it pertains to the fossil record, speciation mechanisms, and population genetics. We went to the Moore Lab of Zoology to measure and catalog birds ourselves. After pouring through papers, textbooks, and historical documents, we were finally ready to embark on our journey to the Galapagos. We lived on the boat as Darwin once must have. Our typical day consisted of a morning hike, a morning snorkel, an afternoon hike, another snorkel, and a sunset hike. At night, we read scientific literature and shared our knowledge with each other. During our hikes, we thought about what made the Galapagos such an iconic location for studying evolution. These volcanic islands are young and have never been inhabited by humans, meaning that human interference in the course of evolution is minimal. The Galapagos Islands lie on the equator and are directly hit by the effects of El Niño, experiencing alternating periods of severe rainfall and detrimental drought. These extreme environments constantly push the animals to their limits, and evolutionary changes can be observed as a response to climate variations. We experienced firsthand that the Galapagos is not an easy place to live. Ernesto Vaca, our naturalist, suggested that we try sitting still on the volcanic rocks of Moreno Point on Isabella Island, just observing and feeling. We miserably sat, sweating and getting dehydrated, and it did not take long for us to realize that we as humans would not last more than a couple hours on this island. The black lava gets hot enough to fry an egg. There's no fresh water. The soil temperature reaches over 50 degrees Celsius. This exercise helped us see that the animals are in a constant battle, doing everything they can to live another day. This is why iguanas chomp on prickly cactus for food. Marine iguanas dive 100 feet to forage from algae. Evolution is the only way they could call this harsh place their home. And we walked away from Isabella Island with a greater appreciation for the work of evolutionary biologists like the Grants, who voyaged to the brutal and harsh climates all over the world in search for scientific insights. For the first time, I felt like I was seeing nature in its truest form. I saw raw forms of life and death. Frigate birds dying on tree branches from starvation. Dolphin skulls washed up from the shore. A baby sea lion left all alone without his mother. I also saw the earth changing before my eyes. I watched volcanoes erupting from the bow of the boat, and I imagined iguana populations being wiped out, trees getting demolished by lava. And at the same time, new land and oceanic habitats were forming before my eyes for new species to form, evolve, and thrive in the next hundreds of years. Rob Phillips and Victoria Orphan are believers of science education by experience. Thanks to them, I have a newfound drive for why I do science. 
and it's to advance the collective knowledge of this beautiful world we live in. I thank them for giving me this experience. Rob and Victoria are the ones that make Caltech such a special place to be. They inspire the future generation of scientists, engineers, and changemakers. I'm thankful for my friends. We came from different backgrounds, biology, astrophysics, engineering. But we all came together with curiosity and love for science. We danced together, ate together, and read to each other. We were 14 Caltech students following the steps of Darwin. We walk away inspired by nature and by science. And I can't wait to see what scientific discoveries we make as Darwin once did.